Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So in the near future I'm going to need to be doing a couple of titrations of some acidic and basic solutions and uh, rather than going out and buying like a proper burette thing I thought uh, we could make it out of one of these glass rods. So what I was thinking of doing was uh, plugging the end of this glass tube with some silicon and then just adding this little uh, dropper piece from an old pipette onto the end there and that would act as our dropper and then if we use a large glob of silicon at the end there what we can also do is after drilling a hole straight through to let all the water run out we can also drill a hole in the side and use this piece which we'll plug both the ends of and drill like a hole in the top and a hole in the bottom and use that as a kind of stopcock and we'll see how well that works. Uh, I'll silicon all this up and then we'll wait a day for it all to dry and see if we can get it to actual actually work. I'll silicon all this up, uh, wait a day for it to dry and then we'll see how well it works and if it doesn't we'll see if we can fix it and then I don't have any way of marking measurements on the side of the glass tube right now but once I get like a, a graduated cylinder that can measure accurate uh, volumetric measurements then we'll put some measurements on the side and we'll be able to do some relatively accurate titrations. So now that both the burette and the stopcock piece they're both drying uh, we'll wait 24 hours roundabout and drill some holes in the sides of our burette piece. So it's 24 hours later all the silicon has dried so you can see that all of this uh, I've drilled a hole that goes right from the end there the camera could focus uh, I drill, I've drilled a hole that goes right from the end all the way into the glass tube here so we've got a passage for the water to flow from the tube and drop out the dropper there uh, I've drilled a hole sideways for the stopcock to go in and if I take the stopcock out just a little bit you can see I've drilled a hole that goes straight through it like that just there and so if we put that back in when we turn it like that we let the passage of water go through you might be able to see uh, the water that's in the, in the very the very end there so if I take the camera back a little bit you can see that just slowly draining out because I've opened the passage again and also close the passage just by turning it 90 degrees again. So I'll fill up the glass tube with some water and we'll see how it actually uh, performs when we try to drop the water through the burette. All right, so I've closed the stopcock here and I've got just a few milliliters of water that we can pour straight into the glass tube. So we'll fill it up and you can see with the stopcock closed, we've got very minimal dripping can get it so that it, it completely stops dripping, but that's a little bit tricky. We've got to kind of adjust it. Uh, but when we open it, you can see that we get a nice flow of drips, and then we can close it quite easily. So it should be good for some pretty uh, some pretty inaccurate titrations, I guess, but uh, it should be good nonetheless. So now that we know that it works relatively well, uh, we might have a go at doing an actual uh, crude titration with this thing. First of all, I've just made some uh, pretty inaccurate uh, milliliter markings on the way up the tube, uh, just using the just using the markings on the side of this 10 mil beaker. Uh, it's not very accurate, but once I get a graduated cylinder, I'll I'll make some proper some proper markings. So I've got a few milliliters of 6.4 percent hydrochloric acid here, and we'll just pour that straight into the top. And we've got it on a slow drip so we can fill up the actual uh, dropper piece with our solution. And I've also put together a sodium hydroxide solution that we don't know the concentration of. So we will stop at this if I can get it right. Alright. And then we will match it with the markings that I've made previously. That's 
looking about right. And we'll start dropping this in a bit at a time and stoppering it. And then we'll grab our glass stir rod and test it with some pH paper over here. So still strongly, uh, strongly basic. I'll show you the pH paper now. Just there. And we'll just keep dropping that. I've got it on a slow drip right now. And I'll keep getting bits of the solution and testing it with the pH paper until it reaches pH 7. So the pH paper should go green once we reach the neutral pH. And so now you can see we've reached a pH close to that of neutral up the top there. Slightly acidic, but that's alright, it's not very accurate anyway. And I can see that we've used a little over 3 milliliters of our 6.4% hydrochloric acid solution. So if we work out from that, uh, we can work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide that we started with. So to find the concentration of the initial 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution, we can do the stoichiometry. Uh, we've got our reaction hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide goes to water and just regular table salt. Uh, and you can see that we've got a one-to-one -one ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So first of all, uh, the amount of acid that we used was 3.1 milliliters uh, of 6.4% hydrochloric acid. Uh, this corresponds to 0.1984 grams of HCl, uh, which again corresponds to uh, using the 36.46 grams per mole uh, molar mass of hydrochloric acid, uh, we get around about 0 0.005, uh, moles of hydrochloric acid that were in the reaction. Uh, and because we've got a one-to-one -one ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, the concentration of well, the, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we used was also 0 0.00. 544, uh, and then because it was in 10 milliliters, which is a one hundredth of a liter, we can multiply this by 100, and we get 0 0.544 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Now, what I think we've done to get this value is actually perform probably the most inaccurate titration uh, ever, uh, because with this tiny thin tube and these um, these milliliter markings also the 6.4% uh, hydrochloric acid that should have an L on there 6.4% uh, I just got from diluting uh, commercial grade 32% hydrochloric acid by five times and obviously this dropper isn't going to be accurate and I probably didn't even start with 10 milliliters or even use 3.1 milliliters of hydrochloric acid this is probably I don't know, 20%, 50% out, it's, it's a pretty useless value, but it's a proof of concept anyway. So it works somewhat, uh, it's probably no more useful than just a standard, uh, standard pipette, but as it is now, it works, and I mean it's called scrap science, so I think we're done. Catch you next time.